dear students please note down these notes have been uploaded in the description of video please download your notes dear students in this lecture of developmental biology today i will clear extra embryonic membranes extra embryonic cords or fetal membranes as name indicates these are extra embryonic cords which are derived from extra embryonic tissues and dear students these extra embryonic fetal membranes which surround the embryo from outside in case of terrestrial vertebrates like reptiles birds and mammals the embryo and this embryo is surrounded by this inner arc or it is umbrella like structure and this extra embryonic coat which is umbrella like or this is an inner arc it is named amnion so these terrestrial vertebrates like reptiles birds and mammals are amniotes while in case of fish and amphibians these are found in aquatic conditions so their eggs their embryos remain surrounded by water in fishes and amphibians this inner arc or amnion is absent so these are an amnions no down the vertebrates are classified in two groups on the basis of presence of amnion dear students this is an embryo and this embryo is surrounded by an umbrella like structure it is amnion that is a characteristic feature of all terrestrial forms reptiles birds and mammals this amnion it encloses a cavity that is amniotic cavity and that cavity is filled with a fluid that is amniotic fluid and that amniotic fluid prevents desiccation of the embryo but in case of fish in case of amphibians as eggs remain surrounded by water so there is no need of this amnion in case of terrestrial form this amnion prevents desiccation otherwise embryo becomes dry but dear students in case of fish and amphibians there is no problem of desiccation of embryo so these are an amnions while the reptiles birds and mammals are amniotes here four types of extra embryonic cords four types of extra embryonic membranes or fetal membranes these are amnion chorion allantois and yolk sac first of all i will discuss amnion this is embryo having two reason this in this anterior region this region represents head region of embryo it is cephalic region while this posterior end it is tail region or it is caudal region of embryo dear students formation of amnion that occurs in two ways either by folding or cavitation in folding this is the diagram of chick embryo here the embryo its anterior region it is head region this one is posterior it is caudal tail region in this anterior region this fold appears no down in this anterior region of head a head fold of amnion appears just after 30 hours of incubation in case of chick similarly in this posterior region in this caudal region another fold that is tail fold of amnion which appears about 48 hours of incubation both this head fold and this tail caudal fold of amnion which move towards center they grow and meet almost in the middle part of this embryo dear students both folds this head fold and this caudal fold which meet here almost in the middle part about on fourth day of incubation 
and this junction on which both this head fold and tail fold meet this junction this connection is not our own competitive exam students this connection is zero amniotic connection or it is amniotic raphe no down this amnion which surrounds this embryo like an umbrella shaped structure and this amnion encloses a cavity and that cavity is amniotic cavity in which a fluid is there that is amniotic fluid and this amniotic fluid it performs several functions first of all this amniotic fluid prevents desiccation otherwise embryo in case of terrestrial form becomes dry dear students this amniotic cavity this amniotic fluid or amnion it maintains internal environment it means it maintains constant temperature and pressure of embryo as well as this amniotic fluid it allows movements of embryo dear students this amnion it is formed by two layers and its outer layer that is somatic mucosa and its inner lining is ectoderm both ectoderm and somatic mucosa collectively named somatopleur while the next fetal membrane that is chorion and this chorion which develops due to an extension of this is extra embryonic coelom and this extra embryonic coelom it extends due to the extension of this extra embryonic coelom the second extra embryonic coat which is chorion and this chorion produce outer arc dear students this amnion it produce inner arc which is formed by two layers its outer layer that is somatic mucosum and inner layer is ectoderm and in this outer coat outer arc that is chorion which is formed by two layers its outer layer that is ectoderm and inner layer is made up of somatic mucosa both ectoderm and somatic mucosa collectively named somatopleur this chorion this chorion provides space for the development of next extra embryonic coat that is allantois in case of terrestrial forms again dear students in case of birds reptiles and egg laying mammals prototherians both chorion and this next coat that is allantois they produce allanto chorion and this allanto chorion acts as extra embryonic lung that involves in gaseous exchange in case of developing embryo inside the egg and dear students this chorion also provides a protective coat like amnio it acts as a cushion that absorbs mechanical shocks it prevents the embryo from mechanical injuries in next lecture i will discuss allantois and yolk cell